It's Iron Skillet Week, and it's a huge game for both teams, SMU trying to get back on track, and TCU as well. Well, you have a special guest to talk about that next year on Locked on Horn Frogs, your team every day. You are Locked on Horn Frogs, your daily podcast on the TCU Horn Frogs, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. That's right, Locked on Horn Frogs, your team every day. I'm Steven Simcox. If you're watching on YouTube, next to me is Billy and Body. Billy has covered the SMU Mustangs for a long time and is now doing it for On3.com and does a great job uh, having the pulse on that team. So, Billy, I guess we'll start with, I mean, I know they were trading snaps between or trading series for a while between Preston Stone and Kevin Jennings. He played a lot in that BYU game. What do you think ultimately led to – the decision to go with him moving forward and that announcement uh, during this, this past bye week that Rhett Lashley Lash made this decision. Yeah, there, there's a lot of reasons for it, I'm sure, behind the scenes. But I think when you're SMU and you've got the offensive line play that you've had so far this year, you had to try something new at quarterback. You know, Preston Stone was under a lot of duress, a lot of pressure. But at the same time, Kevin was able to find some rhythm and move the offense up and down the field a little bit. They didn't come away with touchdowns. They – shot themselves in the foot with an interception, a fumble, some penalties that hurt them in the red zone and and trying to capitalize on those opportunities that they had. But it was clear that the offense at least responded with Kevin at quarterback. And and Preston, I think, to an extent, has really struggled to start games off well. And for SMU, as the schedule turns to what has been BYU in the Big 12, TCU in the Big 12, and then the rest of an ACC schedule – the, the, the line in terms of your your margin of error is so small. And so you can't waste time with a series or two or like the Nevada game, almost an entire half, getting into a rhythm and finding your way. And I think that's where Rhett Lashley ultimately had to make the call because this offense has responded to Kevin when he's gone in. And, and if SMU is going to beat TCU – the last two years, they've got off to poor starts, and in part, that's Preston Stone. In part, that's in the team overall. And so with Kevin Jennings now at the helm, they at least hope that that's going to help them get going a little bit earlier, not be flustered, and just kind of play under control. This game at the quarterback position has not been good for SMU the last two years overall. So for Kevin, people that aren't familiar with him, I, mean, I know he's a dual threat guy. What does he bring to the table at the quarterback position, Billy? You know, with Preston Stone, he was the blue chip prospect that was on the radar since eighth grade. He's, you know, a Dallas Highland Park young man who grew up going to SMU games and is an SMU legacy. Kevin, on the other hand, he was committed to Missouri State as a senior and led Dallas South Oak Cliff to their first state championship in years. Mm -hmm. Both are state championship winning quarterbacks, but Kevin did it at, you know, one of the highest levels of Texas high school football and really drove that SOC team to that championship and and Rhett Lashley and his staff right when they were hired here saw him play in the playoffs and they were watching one of SMU's commits at the time and they said we've got to get that guy at the quarterback mm-hmm. position and he's super calm collected you know he's really kind of quiet he's coming out of his shell slowly but surely uh, okay. but he is he's kind of the silent assassin is what they they nicknamed him in in high school and you know spending time around him he's somebody that doesn't really get flustered you know I'm not saying that everything's always going to be perfect. We saw against BYU the red zone turnover and the two-minute drill at the end of the game didn't look good at all. But at the same time, he didn't participate much with the ones during practice that week. And you go back to his time where his first start ever was against Tulane on the road in the AAC championship, and he gets drilled on the opening play of the game, uh, a complete you know lookout block uh, situation, mm-hmm. fumble, Tulane goes up 7 nothing. And it didn't bother Kevin. You know, he went back out there. He got the offense going. They scored some touchdowns. They got some field goals. And he didn't play perfect. But nothing was ever too big for him. Nothing was out of control. And I think that's the biggest thing that he brings to the table is just a calmness and 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 a steadiness that that maybe SMU has been missing offensively. So he's got a great arm. You know, a lot of people talk about Preston Stone's deep ball, but quite frankly, I mean, Kevin has the the, the pop that you look for out of a quarterback's arm. And of course he could run it. It's about finding some, a little bit more consistency 
with him and developing a little bit more of a deep threat because against BYU, that was something that they took away really well was going deep. What's been the biggest culprit for the the red zone issues? I know they had a couple turnovers against BYU. Um, where have they struggled to find consistency once they get, you know, in good positions down the field? Yeah, I think penalties have been important, but one thing that I think SMU should do, and I think they want to do it against TCU, is they they want to simplify things. You mm-hmm. know, you look at what they were able to do in short yardage over the last three games, and they've been really good. And they've been really good just kind of running straight up the middle and picking up the first down or scoring a touchdown and moving on. And against BYU, they kind of got away from that in the red zone, I felt like. They went for it on fourth down on their opening drive with Kevin, and he they ran a heavy package eye formation under center play action and you know we were look, sitting there in the press box saying i mean this is a this is a play action mm-hmm. you know flat option and a corner route and that's exactly what they ran so they're a little too maybe maybe they overthink things a little bit in terms of play calling at times but that's something that can be easily fixed and corrected i, I think simplifying things and you know sticking to an inside run game that has been pretty strong for smu this season is is one piece of it and then you know players got to make plays too and jordan hudson had an opportunity to catch a touchdown and it would have been a tough grab for any receiver but it goes through his hands and you know that's difference in a ball game and so they've got to find ways to make those relatively routine plays against a tcu and against the competition they're going to be facing because that's the difference in these ball games right now is it's not that smu is you know, being pushed around offensively. They're, mm-hmm. they're running the ball well. They've had over five yards of carry with Brashard Smith, over four k- yards of carry with Jalen Knighton, who's going to be out this week. They did some things well, but they are just not as a unit either focused well enough, play in, play out, or they're overthinking things in some situations. So I, I, I just say they've got to simplify things overall. Defensively, I mean, it feels like they've been pretty solid so far. I know they hug in there against BYU. What have they done well this year to uh, – I know they caused some turnovers, and what have they been um, really good at so far this season on that side of the ball? I think they've done a really nice job playing assignment football, and that's mm-hmm. something that Scott Simons, when he got here, he had to wait a little bit before I think they, they brought some reinforcements in terms of getting that defense together. And we saw it come together, you know, watching as media for them in the AAC championship run that they had. And they were able to have a top 25 defense and, and really good in, in multiple areas and categories. And even against OU and I think to an extent BYU – or uh, excuse me, OU and, and to an extent TCU last year – the defense played well. They ran out of gas mm-hmm. against TCU. The offense did not help them. And a lot of defenses, like TCU kind of saw last week, yeah. if, you're, if your offense isn't helping you at times and you're you know, getting run on, you're going to get tired. And eventually things kind of spiral. And it, last year, I think they played really, really well overall as a group. This year, they have more depth on, on the defensive line and more talent and at the position group overall. And I think that's kind of helped – maybe hide some some areas where as they step up into you know this new level of competition that it's going to help them but in terms of of how it kind of impacts how they're going to play TCU you know they they feel like they're going to be able to do a good job stopping the run and i and i think in this in this game Sonny has shown that he wants to run the ball and they've had success running the ball mm-hmm. uh, the last two years against SMU and and then that opens up everything else and with this defensive line for SMU and this front seven in particular, they've got a veteran bunch. They're, they're playing well. They're playing assignment football, and that's been the key. And from there, if they can maybe limit some of the explosives, they'll be in good position to, to keep this at a reasonable uh, level. Because I do think TCU is going to get theirs. They've shown that ability to over over the last couple of years was was sunny there. And you know, for this defense, they're they're playing with a lot of confidence right now. And keeping with that assignment football, you know, mantra and, 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 Mm -hmm. uh, you know, just overall consistency, that's kind of been the key for them that if if they're going to have another strong showing, they've got to do it on Saturday. There's always history with this game, but obviously like coach Dykes that, you know, that's a big factor here. 
I know SMU also last year, we talked a lot about the series coming to an end and that being a subplot too. Uh, but I know like SMU's programs changed a lot since Sonny left. I mean, they, they, you went on the ACC championship run. Uh, they moved to the ACC now. Um, what would you say the temperature level is? I, I'm, I'm sure it's going to be a raucous environment, but like from a, a hate standpoint, I guess, among the fan base, have, have people sort of moved on or is there still that, you know, hey, we want to stick it to this guy when he comes to town? There, There's definitely a, you know, the SME fan base wants to stick it to him. I mean, right. the, that's always going to be there as long as Sonny – is there and and now wherever he goes mm -hmm. from TCU, if he you know ends up going somewhere else or TCU moves on one day, that's always going to be there because he left the program and went across town. I think for me, watching this kind of lead up this time, it's very different. This is the first time SMU's had a bye week in a in a minute before this game, uh, in particular the last two years. They're making a change at quarterback. They're announcing things. They're not trying to do, you know, a bunch of like cloak and dagger stuff to try and get TCU to prepare for other things. They, anni they announced that Jalen Knighton's out. And until I saw Jalen walking around on campus earlier this week, I had no idea he got hurt the last play against BYU. Mm -hmm. So Rhett Lashley's yeah. trying to maybe bring it down as far as, hey, this is another game. Because SMU's come out either too pumped up or – uh, too emotional and and that's impacted their ability to execute in this game and the reality is when SMU's playing well and even when TCU's playing well this should be a good matchup this should be a game that in the second half we're sitting here and and it's it's in the balance and I think that for SMU side that's what they want to see this week and play with good execution and that's really what matters more than whatever Sonny is doing or you know the hatred that the fan base can handle and worry about that side of things but this is a big opportunity for SMU overall you know two years ago it was 11 a.m kick it was a sold out stadium and it was a complete train wreck and I and as somebody who covers SMU and watching obviously that unfold you're sitting there saying how can the team was unprepared to come out and be mm -hmm. competitive right away, but also the stadium operations and all the, those things. Fast forward two years, there's a brand new end zone complex. Last year, they fixed the concessions issues and created a bunch of new concourse um, areas to you know have people hanging out in different beer gardens. And uh, they renovated the restrooms and they renovated all the stadium concourse things. So all of these things are now in place. And right. all of the issues that, you know, if you were here two years ago as a fan should be handled. Now SMU on the field has to handle their business. And I think that SMU fans, that's what they're worried about this year. Uh, you know, this is a team that doesn't have the, the confidence of the fan base comparatively to last two years where a lot of people were saying, mm -hmm. okay, well, Sonny's coming into TCU. He's taking over a new job. And SMU with where they were should have been more competitive. And then last year, it was a championship team for SMU. They should have been more competitive. This year, they're starting a brand-new quarterback. The offense hasn't shown much. There's not much confidence. But this is the type of game that Rhett Lashley, if, if he wants this program to be at a very high level, he's got to figure out how to win this game. And, and that's kind of the, the temperature. The temperature around the, the fan base is more worried about SMU getting a win and showing well versus what uh, Sonny is doing and and uh, where he's got his program, which is a program that is coming off a 21-point deficit, I believe, home comeback loss. So they've got yeah. their own issues. SMU has its own issues. Somebody's going to be ticked off about how Saturday ends, and you can take the rivalry out of it. These are two football teams that both badly need wins both from a momentum perspective for conference play and also for just maybe some goodwill with their own mm -hmm. fan base. And, and, you know, Rhett Lashley, he won the AAAC last year. People were excited and are excited, but you've got to break the door down and beat a power conference opponent, especially now that you're in one. And for Sonny, you know, after last year and losing, losing the way they did to UCF, I'm sure he wants to get back on the good side of TCU fans. Yeah, big week psychologically for both teams, I think, for sure. Just, you know, could be a springboard or 
uh, honestly, like a really bad uh, kind of downfall for, for either team if they come up with a loss. But he's Billy and Body. He covers SME for on three. I think you guys got like a special deal going on this week, right, Billy, for people yeah. that want to sign up? Yeah, I know all the Horn Frog fans will be all over it. Uh, <laughs> right, right. Yeah, code, code Pony up for 50% off annual subscriptions. We like to reward some people that jump on us, uh, jump on the site with us uh, over these rivalry weeks. So check us out if you uh, so so fancy yourself looking at an SME message board. Yeah, if, if SMU people are watching that, definitely do that. If TCU people want to see how long they can troll Billy before he bans them, then, <laughs> then they're free. They're free to do that as well. Billy, thank you, man. Uh, we appreciate it. It should be fun this week. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Steve. You're running out of time on a great deal. You need to act fast. FanDuel app or FanDuel.com slash lockdown. Put $5, just 5 bucks. Put a $5 bet down. Why not? Give it a try. NFL game, college ball game, MLB, whatever you fancy yourself with. And then, uh, yeah, if you have YouTube TV, you can get three months of NFL Sunday ticket. For free. That means any out of market NFL game that's available, you can watch it there. NFL Sunday ticket, three month trial for free. All you got to do is make one $5 bet. FanDuel.com slash locked on or the FanDuel app. Also, I want to tell you about our friends at Roy. Roy is the new way for fans to get directly involved with name, image, and likeness. It stands for return on you. You can uh, directly support players and just give them money, essentially. Uh, and they can access it and maximize their name, image, and likeness potential. You can also exclusive get exclusive content access. When fans contribute to a successful campaign, there will be announcements, behind-the-scenes footage. When that athlete decides to access those funds, you can engage with athletes on their NIL journey. Download Roy today on the iOS or Android. Enter a referral code locked on. And you'll automatically be entered into a sweepstakes to win fifty thousand, or excuse me, five thousand dollars cash. Make sure I get that right. Sweepstakes to win five thousand dollars cash. Use that referral code locked on when you sign up. Roy, the new way for fans to get directly involved with NIL. So Billy and Body, kind enough to join us this week, talking to SMU. I feel like both fan bases. Well, I don't know. I think TCU fans are probably fairly confident. Maybe not feeling great after the loss to UCF, but I don't know. Hit me up in the comments here. Let me know what you think about this ball game. Um, but both fan bases, a, a little bit tempered with expectations as both teams try to bounce back and get a victory. I do think this is a huge game for TCU. And ultimately, like, not a lot would change – you know, all your goals would still be in front of you, even if you took a loss, but a loss would mean you're two and two. You got a toss up game the next week against Kansas. Like a lot of things could go south if you drop this football game. And it'll be a challenge with a new quarterback there. You know, Sunday Dykes talked this week about the issues preparing for them, but Kevin's been on film enough that I don't think they'll be completely surprised with what they do. I'm sure there'll be a few wrinkles that SMU unveils um, with that bye week, having that time to build an offense around what he does. He's much more of a dual threat. So, you know, that means you can do some things in the run game. Jalen Knighton being out is significant. I mean, Rashad Smith is their big-time running back, but Knighton is also a good change of pace. And so that means you'll probably see more of Smith, and I would think more of Jennings running the ball as well as TCU gets ready for this ball game. But – the SMU defense was a pretty solid unit last year overall. They struggled against TCU, though, um, and that was a game where physically the Frogs played well. So th something's got to give here because Billy was talking about, well, they, they think that they can really handle <clears throat> stopping the run or they believe that's just going to be a huge important part of what they need to do this week because last year Monty Bailey had such a big game and that helped. Chandler Morrison company kind of stay ahead of the chains and run their offense to its most effectiveness. But TCU hasn't really been able to run the ball against anybody this year. And honestly, like they've become more of a throw it around the yard type of group. So can they consistently sustain drives and move the ball down the field against the system U defense? I think that'll be the big question. I feel like the defense will have a good plan for Kevin Jennings and provided that he doesn't surprise them with 
a lot of new wrinkles in this offense. They should be able to hold their own pretty well. I really do feel like it comes down to offensively, can you not go through those lulls that you've seen so far this year where you just have a few empty drives in a row? Because I can really put you behind the eight ball. So big week for uh, Coach Dykes and company. When we come back, we'll get an update on health. This is Locked on Horn Frogs, your team every day. If you need tickets for that game in Dallas or just in general for a theater show, comedy event, theater show, shows you how often I go see plays, but you get the idea. If you need something for a ticket for a sporting event or any other type of entertainment, the Game Time app is what you need to use. You can use the promo code Lockdown College for $20 off your first purchase. They have uh, last minute deals and flash sales. So even if you're not on top of things, you know, a few weeks in advance, you can still use the Game Time app. Download the Game Time app today. Again, that promo code is Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. I make it easy for you, easy to access. We appreciate the Game Time app and their sponsorship of the Locked On Network. No hidden fees. There's some fees, but they're going to tell you what those fees are up front. Game Time. Download it today. So uh, just a couple of health updates before we go here. Um, I think one thing that I not underreported, but I guess I didn't give enough credence to after the UCF game, Paul Lawali did not play. He practiced some last week. He's been practicing this week. So I would think he'll be back on the field. That will be helpful. Um, just his size and his ability in the run game should make a difference. With him out, CCU is pretty undersized on the D line. And I think with the way UCF ran the football, um, it created a big matchup problem. But Paul should be back this week. I think he'll be on a pitch count of sorts, but we'll at least get to see him out there in playing time. I can't really make sense of this SMU offensive line. They honestly sound pretty similar to what TCU, well, I guess the opposite of what TCU has done. They've run the ball fairly well. They've struggled to pass protect. And so I wonder how much SMU will just try to keep the ball on the ground this week because of TCU struggles against UCF. Run fits will be a huge key. You know, can you just come up and make plays, make those tackles? Um, BYU did a good job of it and did especially a good job of just kind of bowing up in the red zone. But SMU had a couple of big turnovers that – were really, I mean, self-inflicted that kind of sputtered out those drives um, where they had a chance to take the lead. On the offensive side of the ball, Dalen Wright has been practicing. He's supposed to be available this week. Um, I mean, with Dalen, I'm just kind of at the point, like, if he's if he's a- able to go, that's awesome. And this receiving core, and we've talked over the last few years about some units, like, some groups and position groups that we've been excited about that haven't really lived up to the hype. These receivers have lived up to the hype so far. Jack Besh has been a revelation. Savion Williams is, I'd like him to get more involved like through four quarters, but he has been effective when he's gotten the ball. Eric McAllister looks more comfortable. JP Richardson has done, you know, what he's been doing for a couple of years now, which is just being a solid playmaker. Um, and so adding Dalen to the mix, I think, is a huge plus. Now, I don't know how much you can count on it, but he's another dude that can that's just big, physical, and go make plays. And adding him to an already good passing offense is great news. I mean, it's awesome. I think he's another weapon to have in the bag. But honestly, like, TCU needs more help finding guys who can run the ball effectively and blocking that up. And so it doesn't help that issue, but it does enhance something that you've already done really well, which is pass the ball around. We'll get keys to the game and predictions tomorrow, and we'll have a live post-game show on Saturday after that game on the CW. It's Locked on Horn Frogs, your team every day. We're free and available wherever it is you get your podcast.